In my last video, Can Linux Phone Succeed? I did kind of an informal survey of why people are thinking about Linux phones and I got a little surprise from the reactions. This is a follow-up to that video and I believe now that the Pine Phone by Pine64 will be big, in fact, bigger than expected. And if you don't know what a Pine Phone is, well, come on in and I'll tell you. It'll be the coolest thing in 2020. Let's talk about this next. I asked you all to leave comments about why many of you are interested in a Linux phone and I was not expecting the response. Since this is the internet privacy channel, I thought that people follow me mainly because of what I teach about internet privacy. And I'm sure most of you do. And if you're not convinced about the importance of internet privacy, I will teach you more and more about internet privacy in the future. But in the meantime, I discovered that many of my subscribers are geeks like me. And even more, many of you are Linux geeks. So back to the Pine Phone. If you're just hearing about this, the Pine Phone is a new $150 device that's being sold now as an early adoption model without any software shipping near the beginning of 2020. By March 2020, it's expected to be shipped with a default Linux OS installed. And you can easily change the OS later since it can boot from a micro SD card. They only made 3,000 of this in the first batch, but Pine64 was planning on manufacturing around 50k units in 2020, depending on the initial response. Well, based on what I discovered, I think Pine64 should plan on a higher number. I think that it will be impossible for this to fail. First of all, let me describe the innards of a Pine phone to you. Its processor is an all winner 64, which is a quad core A53 Cortex ARM64 device, quite similar to the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, which has a similar CPU. Now, I'll be honest with you. I don't know how this phone will take as a daily driver phone. You'll be surprised to find out that that is not the point of this video. Although I'm equally excited about this being used as a safe privacy phone for myself. But I already talked about that in another video. First, for the geeks out there, let me tell you what you're getting with a Pine phone. This is a great deal for makers, geeks, ham radio operators, preppers, and just general Linux enthusiasts. In case you're not familiar with Pine64, the company, they make single board computers just like the Raspberry Pi and also just like the Pi, they support a bunch of mainline Linux distros. It appears that the Pine phone took its innards from the Pine A64 board, which is already made by Pine64, and then they added all the phone-specific parts to it. Many of us are already project geeks and have a Raspberry Pi, so we'll see if we can build a Raspberry Pi similar to the Pine phone. Let's say you get a Raspberry Pi 4, 2 gigabytes. This will run you around 50 bucks. Then let's say you add a touch screen for around 70 bucks with a resolution near 720p. Then you add a battery for around 30 bucks, an SD card for five, then a case. Actually, there is no case for something this big, so it cannot really be made into a portable setup at the moment. But if you can, let's just give it a case price of 30 to 90 dollars if somebody could come up with one. Then on top of that, let's add a camera, which is likely around 20 bucks each. And let's just add one. So if you could come up with all these, you'll end up with something that looks like this. Like I said, I don't have a case, so you'll have to imagine this in some sort of case. Though at the moment, no one makes one. This is pretty unwieldy as you can see. Now my actual configuration here has no touch screen. I actually have a smaller LCD screen that is touch, but it's only 480p resolution as you see here. So too small for anything practical. Now this same configuration could be the same as this. 
Okay, now let's discuss exactly what this comparison means. Geeksters, listen up. This is a Linux single board computer. It's like a Raspberry Pi. The Pine phone has the added feature of having LTE service so it can have remote data access. It also has gyro sensors, ambient light sensor, compass, barometer, GPS, and an eMMC flash storage with 16 gigabytes built in. None of that is possible on a Raspberry Pi without an external LTE modem, which costs around 150 bucks, and an external USB device for GPS and sensors. I don't even know how to price that since I haven't seen one. So this is a super portable version of a fully equipped single board computer. As I said, the Pine phone is around 150 before tax and shipping. What can you run on a Pine phone? Well, GNU Linux. If you're not concerned about the cell based band, it could run Kali Linux apps. I don't know if Kali Linux is available for this processor, but at least the same apps on Kali should run. Several mainline distros should already boot from the SD card since it's the same CPU and GPU as the A64 board from Pine64. From the list on Pine64, you can see Debian, Ubuntu Mate, Armbian, Manjaro, Arch Linux, CentOS, Fedora, Gen2, and Postmark and OS, and maybe more. If you want to use all the features of the device, as a phone, then you'll have to make sure you choose an OS distro that already packages the drivers for Bluetooth, the cell baseband, Wi-Fi, GPS, and sensors, which is existing, for example, in Postmarket OS, which is a mainline distro. Otherwise, if you're not using those sensors and drivers, then it doesn't matter. For example, if you're running it as a server, you probably just need SSH. If you want a touch interface on your Linux distro, then you have to install Plasma Mobile Desktop Environment from KDE or use Ubuntu Touch. What you have here, folks, is an amazing potential project computer that's complete. It can be a super portable battery operated Linux server running normal Linux things. In fact, you could easily turn this into a VPN router or Tor router, a security camera, a media server, a pen testing device, a portable programming tool, a stealth hacking tool, robots with a display and sensors built in, on and on. In fact, I have a great pen testing app that I made that could run on this. The small form factor means you have the ability to do quick pen testing even with just this phone and maybe a Bluetooth keyboard. Every pen tester should have one of these. If people understand that this is more than a phone, it could really blow up. In fact, because you have built-in LTE access, it is already more powerful than any portable laptop I can use because you have remote data access. Just switch SIM cards into this. The screen of a Pine phone is 720p and Pine64 fortuitously used a bigger screen. I don't know guys, this will be a boon for makers, cybersecurity professionals, ham radio people, and just geeks. I would think that if discovered by these types of users, this would be pretty cool. And a lot of people would come up with new ideas on how to use it beyond using it as a phone. Here's one I just thought about for ham radio people. For ham radio, I wanted a proper way of translating Morse code to plain text. This is a nice ham radio cheat since I don't know Morse code. And although I have a general license, you can do this on a Raspberry Pi with great difficulty and zero portability. Since this device comes with a microphone already, I can run this Linux app called CWGET and it could be put next to my ham radio so, so it can hear the Morse code and it should be able to translate it and it will be extremely portable. I could charge it with solar using USB. By the way, a Raspberry Pi has no built-in mic so it's really bulky to do this in a Pi. I tried actually. In fact, there are many possible ham radio apps I can run on this phone that will be perfect for emergencies. There could be other uses for this for prepper communications and computing since it's small and battery operated and so easily charged with a small solar charger. I know it's not a high powered computer, but the form factor creates some solutions that were not possible before and the price actually becomes reasonable for making sophisticated solutions. What else can you come up with? 
Maybe you can give us ideas in the comments below. There's a tablet version of this coming soon too, by the way, which might appeal to those wanting a larger screen. But the small form factor is actually the big plus and the fact that the tablet version doesn't have the phone features like GPS, LTE, and all the other sensors. There was also a laptop version of this called the Pinebook, which sold for $99. That is almost identical to specs to the Pine phone without the sensors and a larger form factor. This is no longer available, so it's likely replaced by the newer Pinebook Pro, which is $200. By the way, the newer boards from Pine64 use faster chips and faster memory. So imagine if, that if this is successful, they can easily turn around and make another version using, for example, the Rockchip RK. 3399 which they use on their newer SBCs. In any case, the form factor could be a boon to geeks like me. It could open up projects that currently are not easy to do. Did I mention robots? Maybe it needs some sort of GPIO pin cable to give us access to things like that on a Raspberry Pi. You need those to run motors and things. I'm interested to know what hacks can be done on this. Remember, this is the same chip as that on the Pine A64 with GPIO pins. Or maybe the USB-C can be used in some way. If this were an Android device, I'd have very limited use for it and it has to stick to being a phone. And that's the fun about having it support Linux. You can do anything. Anyway, this is a purely geek kind of video. I know that if I didn't want to use the Pine phone as a phone, it will have lots of other uses. Maybe it will even have a used market for resale when newer models come out. I realize these products don't come with nice instructions and pre-made OS's, so you'll have to be a little handy with Linux. I'm a maker and I use SBCs, single board computers, in my project. I have this product called a Brax Wi-Fi VPN router that uses a Raspberry Pi, both a VPN and Tor router and does ad blocking too. I also have this radar alarm that also uses a Raspberry Pi. I could probably make a PinePhone version of the VPN router in the future with LTE data support. How about that? That's only going to be possible with a PinePhone. That should be simple. Check out my products on rob.brax.me. The PinePhone is available for pre-order on the Pine64.org site and shipping begins in early January. So if you order one now, you won't have to wait long. If you like my video, please hit that subscribe button and that thumbs up button as well. Thanks for watching.